Welcome to my channel. I want to talk about the civil trial in New York against Trump, but before I do that, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming to my channel. Thank you for viewing my videos. Thank you for liking them, for sharing them, for commenting on them. And thank you especially to those of you who have chosen to subscribe to my channel. I really, really appreciate it, and I'm very thankful for your traffic and for your loyalty. Thank you very much. If you're at all familiar, and you should be, with the trial that's going on in New York, you know that Trump is being tried, but you may not be certain what it's about. Well, it's a civil trial. It's not a criminal trial. Trump is not being tried for having broken some law. He's being tried for supposedly having committed fraud by overestimating the value of his properties when getting loans from banks. Now, there's been no claim made during the trial that he didn't pay back any of those loans. In fact, they've all been paid back, so the question is, who was defrauded? But <clears throat> this popped up on my radar yesterday. And what this is is a CNN host, I don't know her name, because I don't watch CNN, and she is questioning Dennis O'Leary. He's the guy who, who uh, calls himself Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank. And he's obviously a wealthy investor, and he's going to talk about the trial. Well, the multi-million dollar question tonight, will Donald Trump be barred from New York's luxury real estate business and forced to pay perhaps $370 million for falsifying financial records? Here to break it all down and what's at stake, Shark Tank judge... Now, <clears throat> let me explain something to you before we, we get into what Kevin has to say. The judge has already found Trump liable for fraud before the trial began, which is pretty interesting to me. I don't know how you can do that before the trial, but he did. <clears throat> and so the likelihood that Trump's going to be found guilty and be fined $370 million is extremely high but I seriously doubt that that will happen because he will certainly appeal and his appeal, he will win because this trial is stupid. And Kevin will explain to you why that's true. And chairman of O'Leary Ventures, some call him Mr. Wonderful, we'll call him Kevin O'Leary tonight. Kevin, thank you so be for being here today. I have to ask you, I mean, look, some people look at all this and they say, is this what happens in business, what Trump has said he's done or is accused of being done? You've been doing real estate for decades. Does this case strike you as odd? Well, let's leave out Trump for a minute and let's leave out politics and just talk about what happens in real estate development anywhere. So if you're a developer and you've got a building on, on a block anywhere in America and it's worth, let's say, $500 million and you want to build a building right beside it, you go to the bank and say, this building is worth $500 million. I'd like to borrow a construction finance loan against this asset, and I want you to tell me it's worth $500 million too. And the bank negotiates with you and says, well, no, we think it's worth $400 million. And you fight it out. You're always trying to show your assets in the brightest light with the sunshine you can possibly determine for them. You want them to be worth the very most because you're only going to get a 40 or 50 percent loan to value, as it's called. Then you borrow that money. In the case of a $500 million asset, maybe you get $250 million, and you build a new building with a construction finance loan. And so that's what this case is all about. What, and, and by the way, forget about Trump. Every single real estate developer everywhere on earth does this. They always talk about their asset being worth a lot, and the bank says no. And that's just the way it is. So now <clears throat> I want to read some of the comments because there's been over 2000 comments made about this, this video and the, and the comments are very revealing. Okay. He just explained why housing and rental costs are so high and made the case for why we need more IRS agents. What? I don't even get that. Um, 
There's other comments in here, if you read them, where they talk about how every single developer is defrauding the state and defrauding the public, and they should all be charged with a crime. Of course, this isn't a criminal trial. It's a civil trial. But <coughs> here's what I want you to understand. What Kevin is telling you is that when a developer goes to the bank, he's going to present his assets in the most positive and favorable light that he can so that he can get the biggest loan that he can. And then he's going to pay that loan back after he builds the new building and he's going to make money on that building. And then he's going to repeat this ad infinitum ad nauseum. Now, <clears throat> He also talks later, and we're, we're going to listen to it, about how when it comes to taxes, you try to present your assets as being as low in value as you possibly can for obvious reasons, because you have to pay taxes on the value of the property. Now, everybody's going, oh, this is so bad. This, these rich people are just ripping us off. Well, you know what? You are doing the exact same thing. Let me explain to you. Let's say you own a house or you own a piece of property. If you own a house or you own a piece of property and you want to borrow money against it, let's say you want to take out what's called an equity loan. What are you going to, let's say, for example, you have a house that's worth $250,000. What are you going to tell the bank that your house is worth two hundred? dollars or that your house is worth 275. You're going to tell the bank 275 because you want the largest loan you can get. Now, the bank is loaning you the money, so they have the responsibility of determining whether or not they consider the house to be worth the 275 that you say it is. Maybe they'll agree, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll hire a, re hire a real estate appraiser to go look at the property and give it a value. But at some point, you and the bank are going to come to an agreement and you're going to get your loan. That's how it works. That's how everybody does it. Even you, the little guy, does this. Now let's talk about the tax angle. Every year, the local taxing authority appraises your property and assigns it a value for tax purposes. And if you're not happy with that value, what do you do? You go protest it. You say, no, 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 my house is not worth that much. It's worth this much. And many times those protests result in a reduction of the valuation of the property. And you and I both know, if you've looked at any tax bills at all, that the government doesn't value your property nearly as highly as you value it, nor do they value it as highly as the market values it. The actual value of a property is whatever a buyer will pay for it. And if you own a $250,000 home <clears throat> and someone wants to pay $300,000 for it, are you going to turn them down? Are you going to actually say to them, no, 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 my house is only worth 250000 No, of course you're not. You're, don't be silly. That's exactly what these developers are doing. They're just dealing with much larger sums than you and I. But the principles are exactly the same. When you want to sell it or you want to borrow against it, you want to value it as highly as you possibly can. You want to get the most value you can out of the property. When you're paying taxes or when you're being assessed for taxes, you want to value it as cheaply as you possibly can, probably much less than what market value is. That's what everyone does. So, <clears throat> you know, just because it's Trump, and look, I don't like Trump. I think he's, he's loud and obnoxious and insulting. He's a disgusting person. But Trump is no different than you when it comes to real estate. He's doing the exact same thing that you're doing. So get off your high and mighty horse and quit telling me how he's committed all these crimes that he should pay and blah, blah, blah. It's a bunch of baloney. This lawsuit is a bunch of baloney and it'll be thrown out on appeal. Trust me. 
it's just that's reality okay you you can't you can't find anyone that he's defrauded in this case when i'm trying to figure out and i'm not pro or con or i don't care about the politics who lost money nobody the bank got paid back the construction finance loan and a new building was built and if, if you're going to sue this case and win, you got to sue every real estate developer everywhere. This is all they do. This is what they do all day long, every day. So I don't think this thing will ever survive appeal, regardless of what the fine is. This doesn't even make sense. Now, look, I know Trump's got a lot of problems in other indictments and everything else, but but this if you're a real estate developer, you're watching this, you're saying, what is this? This is ridiculous. Well, you know, the thing is. He's exactly right. And as I just demonstrated to you and explained to you, you are doing the exact same thing that Trump is doing, that every real estate developer is doing. So stop with this baloney about this trial. It's a stupid trial. It never should have been brought and it will be thrown out on appeal. <clears throat> yes, I'm pretty convinced that he will be found guilty and he will be fined $370 million by this judge. But it won't withstand appeal. Trust me. It will not. Because it's a stupid claim. No one was defrauded. The banks got their money from their loans. The property was valued the way it was valued. And... Now the new properties, whatever the money was borrowed for, those are making money. So the banks are happy. No one's been defrauded. No one's being defrauded when you claim your house is worth more than it is for purposes of selling it or for purposes of borrowing money against it. And no one's claiming you're defrauding the state when you value your property lower for tax purposes. We all do it. Every single one of us does it. It's just, <clears throat> it's ridiculous. So I hope through this explanation, I've helped you understand the basis of this trial and the reason why it will be thrown out on appeal. And if you're, if you're a Trump hater and you want to see Trump go down in flames, I wouldn't bank on this case being the one that does it because it's not going to. It's, it's a ridiculous case. As I said, it never should have been brought to begin with. Real estate developers all over the country are going, what on earth are you doing? This is silly. You heard Kevin O'Leary. It's ridiculous. Now, some of the other things that he's facing, maybe they'll get him. I don't know. Uh, I'm not that familiar with them. I think the Georgia case, as I've said in previous videos, appears to be imploding because of the uh, unethical and, and uh, uh, ridiculous and possibly criminal behavior of the, the uh, uh, <clears throat> district attorney of Fulton County. But this case, this case is a joke. All right. Look, if you're watching my videos, then I pray for you. I pray that you will live an abundant life. I pray that you'll be healthy. I pray that you'll live a long life. And I pray that you will, <clears throat> excuse me, that you will be kept safe by God. And I pray that you'll be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.